Hi! Okay, today I have two cute little boxes that we're going to make. Now these don't have Halloween papers on them, but as we make the new ones, we're going to do that. There are two ways you can make this, and the first way that I made this was out of chipboard, which is a little heavier than cardstock, and this is like a medium point. It makes a really nice solid box, and it holds together really well. But if you just want something for a little gift with put a little candy in it for Halloween or Valentine's Day, this is just made with regular cardstock. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just cardstock and then pretty paper on the outside. So I'm going to show you how to create the two boxes, one for the lid and one for the bottom. And this is also on our blog. You can get the pattern on the blog. But I'm going to show you how to make it. And if you make it and laminate the pattern, then you'll always have the pattern. You won't have to um, print this out. The first thing you will need to do this is you will need a compass. Uh, you're going to need your pretty paper when we get to that point. You're going to need two pieces of paper. Now, actually, probably just one. You can probably get both of them on here. You might need another sheet for the sides. And you're going to need your pencil, your burnishing tools, your uh, bone folder, your glue, and your smudger and rulers. So the first thing that you'll want to do is to open up your compass. And compasses are interesting <laughs> to play with. But we want to make the first one that I make is two and three eighths inches. So I actually put my compass, the first point on the zero, and then I try to get the pencil at three eighths of an inch. Now, the tricky part about a compass is not to squeeze because once you squeeze, you've lost your 2 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down and then just gently work my way around. And I don't know if you can see that. My husband's back. I mean, God love him. But there you go. That's the first circle. Now you're going to keep this at 2 and 3 eighths. You're going to put your pen your um, pointer and then you're going to mark on each side of that pointer on the circle. You're going to move your pointer to the next mark that you've made and you're going to do the same thing. And you'll keep doing that around your circle and I actually make X's because then it's easier to know where to draw my line when I'm ready to do it. So if you just keep moving around your circle, make sure you get it in the center and then mark your X. And I think this will be my last one. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so that's our first step. Our second step is to take a different pencil and we are going to connect these X's straight across. So I will put my pencil in one and I will maneuver this. There we go. And table's dirty. I need to clean it. <laughs> It'll be okay for this project. Every once in a while I go through and I clean up and organize and then I make another mess. Okay, so basically this is what we want to cut out. So I'm going to get my scissors and I am going to cut. And I'm going to try and be very careful to make it about as perfect as I can.
which for me is hard because I am so far from perfection. I'm perfect for my husband, he tells me, but other than that, I don't know. Okay, so that's our base. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw the top, but then I'm going to work on the sides for the base. Now, the top, <coughs> we want to change our measurement to two and a quarter. So, again, I'm going to put my sharp pointy on the zero, and then I'm going to move this to two and a quarter. Okay, and you can basically make these any size you like as long as you make the bottom part smaller than the top one by about a, an eighth of an inch. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make my tick marks. My husband does the vacuuming and the dusting for me because of my asthma. And so I am so appreciative of that because I've ended up in the hospital with my lungs. Okay, so we do the same thing with this. We're going to go ahead and connect all of our X's to make this six-sided. I don't think it's my table. I think it's something on my, yep, there it is. Something on my ruler was sticking. <laughs> Got it. So I will connect these X's. going to cut this one out because I don't want to get the two mixed up. So I'm going to set this aside. So I'm going to go ahead and actually I think I have enough to do it on here. So since these edges are two and three eighths, let me measure just to make sure. Yeah, two and three eighths. I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> Cut this at two and three eighths. And actually, I'm doing it just a little different. So I want to see, make sure, yeah, that fits perfectly. So this will be my sides for my lid. Now, I lid, my lid, I want them to be an inch tall. So I'm going to make all of these an inch. One, and I need six of them. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay. So now you need your pretty paper that you want to use for this. And since this is my lid, I want to use one of these pictures. And I'm thinking I might try to get... Okay. So I have... A white space around. I want to mark that so that I don't go over that way too much. So I'm going to turn this over and I know I'm not going to get, I'm hardly going to get any of these actually in here because I need room 
for turnovers and all kind of nice things, fun things. So I'm going to try and do the eye as best I can. And it's going to be a little off center. I already know that. I'm going to put that there, put that there. Okay, and that gives me about a half an inch. You want a half of an inch so you can turn it over. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all, I'm going to draw where I want this to go so that I don't forget. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. You're going to put, put glue. And then I want to try and get it as much in that spot as I can. There we go. It looks pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to burnish it down with my bone folder. So then the next thing you want to do, you want to make sure that when you put the sides on, that you keep them just a very, very small piece away from the edge of your six-sided. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on it. And I'm going to, this is a little tricksy. Okay, I want to get it pretty much in line. There we go. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull this just a little bit closer so you can see it. Um, you can see I have just a little space in there because when I flip these up, I want enough space so that these don't bind and ripple. Okay, so we're going to do that with all of these. We're going to glue them down. Now, this one is just made from paper, and I will do a separate lesson at a future time to show you how to do this with uh, cardstock and chipboard to make a, a more sturdy box. They're, they're cute. I just have one on my uh, table, my dining room or living room table for decoration. They're really pretty. They also are very nice if you want a gift for a friend and great for Valentine's Day, but we're going to use it for Halloween candy. And what I've noticed is sometimes your friends, kids love Halloween because it's candy season, but you know what? Your friends do too. And I'm closer to 70 than I am to being a kid, but I love, 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 love to get a present of candy. Even one piece. It just makes you feel good. Makes you feel great. And that is one of my love languages, gifts. And what I've noticed about myself is I do love to receive gifts. My husband gives me gifts, but I actually love giving gifts too. It's not just about me receiving, it's about giving also. So that's just a little bit of love lesson information. <laughs> Sorry. So this is my last piece that I'm going to get glued in here. I don't know what that is. Probably dried glue from some other project. You never know. Okay. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to take our ruler, and you know why I love this one because I can see through it, and so it's easier for me. Let me put my pin in my glue. So sorry. Otherwise, that stuff dries out so fast. Okay, I want to do a half an inch. And so I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, just because then it makes it easier for me. Now these are going to get flipped down. And you'll notice when we make projects, a lot of our projects have this little flip down. It just makes a nice, neat edge. And this one I think is going to be, yeah, but you know what? 
we're going to, I'm going to show you what we do next. So this is not going to matter. If you have that same issue, don't worry about it. Just keep going. We'll be fine. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to connect these corners as best I can. And I'm going to do it just a little bit below the corner, just a very little bit. So next, what you'll see is you have a point here and a point here. I want you to take your ruler and draw a line between those two points, just like that. This one's going to be a little tricksy because you don't have the point, so I'm just going to eyeball it, but it's okay, not a big deal. And one more. Yay! Okay, so the next thing we want to do is cut again. We're going to start cutting up this beautiful paper. And let's save that in case I can use it for another project. Some of these will get pitched, but some of them I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to go ahead and take our scissors and we want to cut those. All of those are going to get cut. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead, and this is this is just a little, little slick, but I'm going to use my smaller scissors because I can get into it better. We're going to cut across these lines. All of them. Even the ones going this way. But I'm, I'm doing it one at a time. I'm going to go back the other way and you can do it however you want. I, this is just my way and it's not the best way. It's just one way to do it. Aren't these scissors cute? I'll show them to you. They're just really adorable. They remind me of my grandmother. Old fashioned. Okay, so the last step before we start fixing this into a pretty box is we want to go ahead and you're welcome to take your ruler and extend this line if you need to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make it just a little bit angled. Each of them is going to get just a little bit angled. Not much, just a, just a tiny bit.
Okay, I'm going to throw all of this in my scrap bin. I do need to clean this. I'll get a new one maybe. So I want to go ahead and start pulling these over. You don't have to burnish them yet. You just have to pull them over. And if you want to do my one little trick where you do, it's a little bit harder with um, cardstock under it. You can do it a lot better when you have um, chipboard. Cardstock, cardstock's just different. So pull those back out. Now we're going to take one side, and this is, I guess, why I do one side at a time. And we're going to push it in. And I would suggest just doing one side so you don't get confused. And then the other side, we're going to push it this way so that it looks like that. And I'm going to do it on this side because it's just easier to see, but I turn it so that you can see what we're doing. Okay, now if you want, go ahead and burnish all that down. these. Okay, and I'm going to pull all of those back up again. Now we also want to fold these and I will burnish them as I go. Okay, so that being done, we need our glue again. Let me put my needle in my shirt so I don't lose it. And we're going to start one at a time. We're going to start gluing. I'm going to glue the inside of one of them down first. So I'm going to put glue on the part that I can see. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they meet at the corner. I'm going to push that. see this is a little futzy. I'm gonna put glue on this other one just so I can get it to stay. Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna burnish those down really well. So what you see is you see one of them comes on the outside and one of them goes on the inside. And this just, I've seen this on YouTube somewhere. I've seen it several times, so I don't know who to give credit to. But you can find that particular hinge on YouTube. Okay, same thing. I'm going to try and get those as close to the corner as I can. And then I'm going to hold them for a minute. The, hold, the warmth of your hand helps the glue to hold. And that will burnish. And we'll do the next set. And this is actually the trickiest part of the whole shebang, is getting these corners glued. Three more. If you just hold that for a couple seconds. last one's generally a little bit more difficult because you can't open it up because you have the other sides um, 
glued down, but just go easy and get your glue in there and then put them together and hold them for a couple seconds. Yeah, the warmth of the hand really helps with this glue. Okay, so we have that much done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down all of these little tabs. those um, Rocher candies would just be perfect in here or several of the um, candy bars, single candy bars, those little wee tiny ones that are um, covered with paper. I think those would be fun. Um, jelly beans. Before I put candy in this, I am going to put a coat of paint and I've been using this um, antique bronze deco art it's a really kind of cool paint and then I use my Mod Podge to put a top coat of protection on it so I'll do that all in here and then um, so there you have a lid oh that's kind of cute that's really good okay um, so then when I do the, the base I will paint it also, but then I will put some of that Easter grass, I guess they call it, or stripped paper that's crinkled up real much. I'll throw that in and kind of then put my candies around it. But the last thing you want to do before you paint is you want to go ahead and burnish all your edges. Uh, smudge them, I'm sorry, smudge them. And then basically you make the bottom the same way and so I'm at 27 minutes I like to keep these under 30 minutes if I can so I'm gonna go ahead and stop if you need to to make the base go ahead and just watch this again because it'll be the exact same thing except your sides will be two and a quarter and then they are also, for this one, I think I would make it two inches. So I would cut this cut all of these. You'll need six of them, remember that. And then you'll attach all of these. And once this lid is put on it, then you'll have about an inch on the bottom and I am using this paper so I will come back and show you what I have finished and we're going to make a really cool um, walkthrough video as soon as I get all of these projects finished but I appreciate you joining me thank you so much I hope you've enjoyed this I hope I hope it's been um, informational and I hope I see you again thanks bye bye <laughs>